we will go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everybody to today's uh, Hours of Service uh, 2020 Updates webinar, where we will try to explain uh, these things to you in plain English, or as Roy would say, in American. Today, uh, you are joined by myself. Uh, I'm Tom Shanborn. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Instructional Technologies. And uh, the guy who was ahead of me uh, when we went mountain biking the whole time is Roy Broomfield. Uh, he is our senior safety consultant. Oops, let me get to the next slide. There we go. Roy's the handsome one. He's also the fast one, especially when we're going downhill. Um, it didn't, it didn't help, though, that you were the only one who knew where we were going. Could, could you really say that I knew where, I, where we were going? I think we, okay. we ended up all over that mountain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, we're going to try to uh, rip through uh, the hours of service today in half an hour, but uh, honestly, it, with questions, we expect that we probably will go over. I will try my best to talk quickly. Um, really quickly, we're going to jump into why the hours of service training matters. Then we're going to, uh, the meat of the presentation is to go through the four different uh, big changes from the FMCSA in terms, terms of hours of service. Um, short haul, sleeper birth, 30 minute breaks, adverse conditions. Then we'll go into uh, a real uh, quick bit about um, the training options that uh, we have for you around hours of service. And then we will get to your questions. But a first, a quick survey for everybody. They say interactivity. Uh, makes these presentations go better. Let's find out. I have two quick questions for everybody. I'm going to launch it. Hopefully everybody will see this. If you could answer these questions real quick. Um, are you training your drivers about the hours of service changes yet? And which of the hours of service updates most concern you? So everybody just take a quick minute to uh, answer these quick survey questions and then I'll uh, take a look at the poll. Uh, looks like uh, most everybody is uh, doing training or they are not yet but planning to. And in terms of uh, which of the ones concern them, it looks like um, the answer seems to be um, all of them. <laughs> so we're gonna give this another uh, 10 or 15 seconds here. Take a quick second to answer the poll. And then uh, I think I can actually share the answers with you. All right, real fast, five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. All right, we're gonna end this and let me share the results with everybody. Uh, so you can see uh, most everybody is planning to, or they haven't yet, but they're uh, going to. Good to see not, nobody is not planning to. Uh, in terms of uh, what people are most concerned about, it looks like um, pretty evenly spit among the sleeper birth, 30 minute breaks and adverse conditions with a few people uh, focused on the uh, short haul. Interesting stuff. All right, hopefully everybody can still see my survey screen here. Uh, we're gonna talk real quickly. So why does this hours of service training matter? This chart shows you guys uh, all these red marks here are all the hours of service related violations from 2017. I apologize for not pulling uh, newer data. Uh, it doesn't change too much. Um, these are the top uh, 11 driver violations in 2017. Um, in addition, 2018 hours of service violations made up 44% of all the out of service conditions for drivers. It's more than any other category. Um, the fines for hours of service violations obviously add up to tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes even for single violations. And you know, we all know that the ELD rule came into effect last year, or was it technically? Anyway, uh, very recently, uh, but they're not the magic bullet. Um, you know, already in 2020, there have been about uh, 3 million roadside uh, inspections so far this year. Um, and uh, of the top 20 violations, five were related to ELD issues. And Roy, can you talk a little bit about some of those 
you know, unforeseen ELD things. I mean, it's nice that uh, we don't have the penmanship uh, test anymore with the form and manner, but people are still getting violations for the ELDs, right? Yeah, I mean, and that's not strictly true, Tom. I mean, there's still a percentage of, of drivers out there that are still using paper logs for various reasons. Um, so there's still those old school violations, but you're right. I mean, the, uh, the, new, the new ELDs had put to rest some of the um, math and arithmetic drivers had to do, um, but there's still things they're failing to be able to do. So at a roadside inspection, in many cases, um, they're unable to find out how to transfer the data to the enforcement officer, or they're failing to have a cheat sheet with a set of instructions for the enforcement officer. So there's even been some whole new violations that we didn't see with paper logs. So the other reason that hours of service violation matter, this is a very safety focused group uh, here joining us today. Um, you know, the ATRI came out with their predicting truck crash involvement study. Uh, you know, they updated every few years, 50% more likely than their peers to be involved in a future crash if you've got a driver with an hours of service violation. So it is a, it is a statistically relevant predictor of future crash. Um, if your drivers um, aren't getting their logs and their hours of service correct. All right, so let's get into the meat of this thing. Uh, let's talk about the rules and the examples. So we're gonna start first with the short haul exemption. It's probably the simplest of all of these. Um, the old rule was uh, drivers within 100 air miles of their primary base were limited to 12 hours on duty. Uh, the new rule uh, they've extended that radius out to 150 miles and increased the on-duty time to 14 hours a day, provided that they have to have 10 consecutive hours off-duty between periods. Uh, so, Roy, can you give us a couple, uh, you know, quick example anecdotally, like about, you know, this, this change and how it's going to impact uh, some of these short-haul companies? Um, yeah, sure, Tom. Um, I mean, mo like most of these, these changes they, they're, they're, they've implemented, they're, they're all about flexibility. Um, and one of the problems with the older rule was with the 100 mile radius, um, which was fine for most, most of the time when you're operating with a 100 mile radius of your terminal. But say, for instance, the driver had to go slightly further on a particular day, they, they were then required to then comply with all of the other hours of service regulations, and record keeping and things like that. So this, this, this change is going to increase that to a slightly larger radius. Um, and it's also going to allow the drivers a slightly little bit more time to complete all of their duties and be in, in alignment with the other drivers that are operating either using an ELD or uh, paper logs. Awesome. So let's talk about the sleeper berth. And on this topic, I'm going to point out right now, we will be answering questions at the end. So if you have questions about this one or any of the following uh, topics, um, go ahead and put them in there and we will save them up for the end. So the sleeper berth, the old rule was the drivers could split their 10 hour off duty shift. Um, they could put eight hours in the sleeper berth, two hours off, um, but the shorter split counted against that 14 hour clock. Um, the new rule gives them a little bit more flexibility. They can still split their 10 hour off duty shift. Um, one off duty period must be at least two hours long and the other period must be at least seven consecutive hours in the sleeper berth. And both periods must total at least 10 hours. Uh, neither period now counts against the 14 hour on duty window, but an eight hour sleeper berth period by itself can no longer be excluded from the 14 hour driving window. Hopefully I explained that and, and corrected it well. Roy, I'm going to turn this over to you to try to explain it sort of in the real world terms what this means. Yeah, I mean, this is probably going to be the one that's going to con cause the most com confusion because it is a little bit of a fluid um, situation. Um, but in this example here, let's say the driver has completed a full 10 hours off duty um, and they start driving at midnight. Um, they drive for seven hours, um, and at that point, they decide to go into the sleeper berth for, for um, three hours, take a short uh, break. Um, upon completion at 10 a.m., um, they continue to drive. Now, under the, um, the rules as they are today, um, they're always going to be aware of their 14-hour clock. So their 14-hour clock would technically end at um, 2 p.m. 
Um, but in this case, because they've gone into the sleeper berth for three hours between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., they've, they've temporarily paused that 14 hour clock. And, and in this example here, um, we have them going on duty an additional three hours. Um, even, even under the current regulations, this wouldn't technically be a violation because they haven't driven after the 14th hour. Um, but once they do um, go back into the sleeper berth at 5 p.m., they are technically only required to take um, a seven hours um, break period to complete that 10 hours. However, once they've completed those seven hours, they don't actually have a full um, 11 hours to drive because it wasn't a consecutive 10 hour break. So they, what they have is the remaining hours um, to drive. And in this case, they would have seven hours to drive following the completion of that uh, seven hours in the sleeper berth up until midnight. Um, as I say, it will cause some confusion, but it will allow the drivers to possibly um, pause their day during the day um, and give them a bit more flexibility should they get held up at a shipper or some other situation. Yeah, or traffic. And, and you were saying that already with, um, with the sleeper berth, uh, is it the sleeper berth one that where we've had a couple of carriers where they've asked us to remove um this yeah, sort of to to explain that it, it doesn't follow their policies is that right yes i mean many carriers find that it is very confusing and potentially either the the drivers are going to become confused with these um changes to the the split sleeper berth rule um but also on the flip side of that is is some of the eld providers potentially may struggle to have their um system be able to manage this correctly so some of our carriers have chosen not to um, allow their drivers to use this and they're, they're sticking with, um, no, the only rule we allow is you to take a, a 10 hour consecutive break and not use the sleeper berth um, exception. Yeah. And then there was also, um, there's also some confusion here around the team uh, driving, is that right? Yeah, there's not been a lot of clarification. And so, you know, these things aren't necessarily called a rule. A lot of times they call them a guidance. So again, um, the FN FMCSA has not been very specific around teams and, and how they can use this um, in, in when the changes go in effect on the 29th. Yeah, yeah. Clear as mud. The, uh, the, I, I, as we will jump now. We've already gotten a couple of questions from this, so we will uh, we will uh, answer those at the end. Uh, we're going to jump now into the 30-minute uh, break. Uh, the old rule was that uh, within the first eight hours of driving, of being on duty or driving, excuse me, um, the driver had to take a 30-minute break in the off-duty status. Um, the new rules uh, basically allows them to take that 30-minute break in uh, – essentially in a on-duty, non-driving status within the first eight hours of uh, driving. Roy, can you talk a little bit about how um, this is going to apply to drivers in sort of a real-world situation? Yeah, sure, Tom. Um, as you mentioned, I mean, previously the driver had to stop driving and take 30 minutes off duty um, within the first eight hours of going on duty. Um, with this change, the drivers are now going to have to still take a 30 minute break, but that's within the first eight hours of driving. And that break can basically be on any duty status they choose apart from driving. So obviously the intention here is to, to prevent a driver driving 11 hours straight without a break and requiring that within the first eight hours of their driving, um, they do stop and take a break. But for the driver's flexibility, this, this break doesn't need to now be off duty. They could jump in the sleeper berth. They could be fueling the truck. They could be offloading. They could be waiting at a customer. As long as this is a 30-minute um, consecutive break or more on any line, as long as it's not driving, it will comply with this change to the 30-minute break rule. Awesome. All right, let's jump into the adverse conditions change, which um, my sort of personal opinion, I think of all these hours of service change, this is probably the one that I personally feel improves safety. Um, the old rule was that drivers could extend their 11 hour drive window up to two hours to 13 hours due to unforeseen weather or traffic, but they still had to fit it in to that 14 hour on duty clock. 
the new rule allows drivers to extend both the 11 hour driving and the 14 hour on duty clocks by two additional hours. So as Roy was talking about, um, you know, I think either yesterday or this morning when we were discussing this, you know, this, this lets drivers actually um, sit out the weather and wait rather than sort of plowing through it um, to beat that 14 hour on duty clock. But Roy, can you talk a little bit more about this? Like I said, I, I think this one is actually good for drivers and provides some really good flexibility for them. Yeah, exactly, Tom. I mean, um, under under the current rule that um, if if they do encounter some adverse conditions, yes, they can extend their driving period by two hours. However, if they were to run into their 14 hour clock, they would then be in violation if they continue to drive. Um, this change is going to give them that flexibility to not only um, continue to use that um, additional two hours driving time, but it also gives the drivers maybe the option to find somewhere safe to park and either wait for weather conditions to improve or if they're in, 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 a, in an accident situation and the road traffic has stopped, it does give them that extra two hours on their 14 hour clock as well as the two hours drive time to get to a safe destination or to where they intended to at the end of their um, trip. Nice. All right. Well, that covers the, the four big changes. Uh, we blitzed through those pretty quickly. I've already seen a couple of questions in here. We will get to those at the end. I want to talk really quickly about um, some of these training options that we have for everybody. And then uh, quickly about sort of ProTrade in general. Uh, we have multiple options for training your drivers around these hours of service changes. Inside uh, Centix or ProTread, we have our full hours of service course that is, um, Roy, that course is about 30 or 40 minutes, is that right? Yes, correct, Tom. Yeah, it's good course, very thorough, talks about all the different duty statuses. It's a great way to um, make sure that uh, your drivers really understand everything about it. We've also uh, got a short uh, update course. Uh, this course is really short. It's less than 10 minutes. In fact, I want to say it's even less than seven minutes. Um, it's just going to go through these four changes and discuss what the rule is and give them an example uh, of how they need to, to talk about it. Um, if you are not a current ITI client, what's wrong with you? I'm just kidding. Uh, we look forward to having you on board soon, but we do have a free, what we did was we took that course and we turned it into a single video and we are offering it to you guys for free. You can go to instructiontech.net slash hours of service. And I'm going to paste the URL right now into the chat window to everybody. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. You can go and sign up for that and you can get uh, access to that free hours of service update video. It's again, it's a real short version. It's just a video though. And it's um, unlike uh, a course assigned in ProTread, uh, it is not going to give you any evidence of that you've actually provided the training, but it will get the information out to your drivers. Um, and if you sign up for that, in addition to uh, signing up for this webinar, hopefully everybody already received um, your free printable poster. It's 11 by 17 PDF, um, kind of takes the same approach that we did with this webinar, showing the old rule versus the new rule. You can print it out, hang them up in your break room, in your distribution center, wherever your drivers might find them. I'm going to go ahead and send everybody the link to that. If you want to, uh, if you've lost your email uh, or for some reason didn't receive it, you can click that link and download that uh, PDF right now for your drivers. Whoops. So uh, do a super fastball pitch here uh, about ProTread and what it is that we do, and then we will get into all of your questions, which are really good. I've already read some of them. Um, ProTread provides training for your entire fleet. Uh, we have a library of more than 140 courses. We've been doing this for more than 20 years, um, really focused on the heavy duty trucking market. And uh, we've got everything from heavy duty trucks all the way down to forklifts uh, in ProTread. In addition, ITI has uh, training for CDL schools. If you guys uh, work with a CDL school and you need them to get into the online marketplace, uh, get compliant with the ELDT, uh, have them give us a call. We have an ELDT compliant uh, curriculum for them called OnRamp. In addition, we have a curriculum for light and medium duty fleets. If you uh, know a fleet that's just vans and box trucks, non-CDL fleets, uh, we have a, a, another curriculum called Clear Drive. Uh, everything focuses on safety, operations, 
and as we talked about today, regulations. Um, we have injury prevention and OSHA courses, as well as specific courses such as hazmat, tankers, manager training, such as reasonable suspicion. Uh, obviously, we think our training is the best. Uh, it's, uh, we take a mastery-based approach. Um, topics are building on one another. We're asking questions as we go along, uh, making sure that the drivers understand before they go on to the next more complicated uh, topic. Everything is done in uh, realistic 3D animations. This really allows us to show situations from multiple angles. Um, you don't get a lot, you don't get any uh, talking heads, you know, sort of uh, where it's somebody just describing what's happening on screen uh, while there's B-roll of, of trucks rolling in the background. Um, all of our courses are very thorough. Um, they're broken down into short topics because we understand that people's attention spans are pretty short. And most importantly, um, drivers really respond well to these courses because they see that they are quality and they see that uh, your fleet is providing them good training. 93% of drivers recommend our training to other drivers as uh, making them safer, making them better drivers. And finally, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the LMS that happens in the background. Uh, we like to say that uh, with ITI, it's proof that safety matters. And that proof part is this LMS. Uh, it's a simple interface with very powerful features. It allows you to assign and schedule based on any data point. Uh, you know, what's their job title? What was their hire date? Uh, what's their home terminal? When's their CDL uh, expire? Or their hazmat endorsement expire? Are you going to assign training based on all those things? And then you can save and reuse those assignments. Customize groups based on different things, such as, again, you know, hire date or something like that. You can connect it to your HR system or whatever back office system that you've got there. Um, and then you've got pre-built and on-the-fly reports. And it is totally customizable. We built our LMS from the ground up. If you want to customize it, um, connect it to whatever system, uh, just let us know. Uh, we built it all ourselves. Um, the developers that uh, will be helping you uh, customize it uh, are based here in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, you won't be uh, dealing with uh, Bangalore for your uh, any updates. And then finally, uh, you know, ITI started uh, to provide training to professional drivers and very quickly we realized that drivers spend most of their time out on the road. Um, ITI offers our Centix mobile app. That's either on iOS or Android. It also works on any internet connected browser. Um, so be it on a computer or a mobile device, and you're never gonna lose progress of your course, even if you're switching between devices. All right. That was, that was pretty fast, wasn't that, Roy? That, I did that pretty good. It was pretty good, Tom. Yep. All right, thank you. The, uh, I need that validation. All right. Uh, so let's get into the questions. All right, so, um, all right. Roy, can you see some of these questions? Yes, and I've been having a look at some of these. Right. Um, Do you wanna go through and pick through the ones that you think are best? Yeah, I've, I've actually, unfortunately, I've been answering a couple of these and uh, um, sending out responses already. All right. you, know, you know how timely we are trying to get stuff done. Um, <laughs> so it's something we do pride ourselves in trying to be responsive and uh, quickly as we can. Um, unfortunately, I didn't realize that when I typed in an answer, it, the question would disappear forever. Oh, and, here, I, I can see, see some of these. Oh, okay. Here, let me, I, so I, I've got a couple of these here. Okay. So, uh, so it says, about the short haul changes, does this apply to property carrying semi-tractors of 80,000 pounds? Uh, to what types of carriers and tractors does this apply? And you wrote, yes, this applies to all property and passenger carriers. Most are sales, local driver types carriers. All right. So ho hopefully that uh, answered that one. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, are there many companies out there that allow their drivers to split log? And yeah, I think that one disappeared on me, but um, yes, th there are. I mean, obviously there's some carriers that feel that that is a competitive advantage to let their drivers do that. But there's also many larger carriers specifically that don't allow um, carriers. So it's kind of a split option. So we, we have done some custom content, as Tom mentioned, for some of our clients that said, you know, we, we, we love your lessons, we love your content. However, 
as, as a company policy, we don't allow drivers to, to use that option. So would it be possible for you to remove that information from our lessons? So that is something we do offer uh, is customization in our content to, to meet those specific needs. Yeah, and I wouldn't be marketing if I didn't elaborate on our customization options, which is, uh, you know, our production team can do anything from, you know, removing sections to changing the voiceover of a section and change the on-screen text. We can host any of your training. So um, if you've got a presentation that you've done and uh, you want to export it to us, we can uh, host that. Um, everything up to creating uh, courses from scratch with uh, new animations and new video and new audio. Um, all of those things are possibilities uh, with our production team. All right, let's see. So sleeper birth split, you said three hours would pause the clock when in sleeper birth, but not when in off duty, correct? Um, no, that, that, that um, pause can, either, can be off duty. So that means either in the sleeper birth or off duty. In, in the example we shared on the screen, it did show the sleeper birth, but that um, two to three hour pause can be either off duty or in the sleeper birth. Nice. Okay, sleeper birth. So the driver can use I use seven three or eight two to satisfy the split, right? And you'd said, you know, or any combination thereof. So they can have two and a half hours, you know, off duty and seven and a half hours in the split. So just as long as it adds up to 10. Correct. Right. Or at okay. least 10, yes. All right, I'm gonna flip over here to the open questions and I'm just gonna click that one. All right, so can the 30 minute break be taken after only 15 minutes of driving? Example, their first drop is super close to the truck stop. It, it, it can, but you also have to bear in mind that um, if, if they continue to drive another um, eight hours, they're gonna have to take another 30 minutes Right. So every eight hours of driving. So if they, you know, if they stop after 15 minutes, then at eight hours and say 45 minutes, they're going to need to stop and take another break. Correct. Great. All right. So, so it's, it just says eight consecutive hours driving or, or within, uh, you know, you cannot drive more than eight hours without a 30 minute break. So if, yeah. if yes, if they've taken one, um, they, they will need to take another one. All right. All right. I'm going to guess this next question comes out of either Los Angeles or the Bay Area. No, I'm just kidding. It's adverse conditions. That includes traffic accidents and not just weather. Correct. I mean, and we did kind of briefly touch on that, that if, they, if the road was closed, you know, due to an accident or something like that, and it couldn't have been predicted at the beginning of your trip, you are able to use the adverse conditions um, exception. Nice. All right, so here, all right, so here's, a, here's an interesting one. Does driving in personal conveyance for 30 minutes uh, break, does that count for the 30 minute break? Um, you know, I would s suspect no, because they, they will tell you on any line apart from driving. However, personal conveyance is a bit of a gray area and I would hesitate to provide you an answer and I would say check with the um, FMCSA for guidance around that. All right, excellent. Uh, let's see. Um, let me skip through that one. Uh, after the eight to two or 73 hour split, what is the restart point for your next 14 hour clock? Well, it all depends on when you took the, um, first half of the, the break. So that's why this, this split C for birth can get confusing. Um, but the other option the driver has is to take a full 10 hour break that will then reset both the 11 hour and the 14 hour clock. So there's nothing in the rules saying that they can't do that. So if they took a three hours and then continued on working, but instead of taking a seven hour, let's say they took a 10 hour, it will reset both of those 14 and their 11 hour clocks. All right. You feel like you're being interrogated yet, uh, Roy? <laughs> um, no, I mean, and I, I understand there's a lot of, lot of issues and confusion. I mean, and I've been looking at this for a long time, and I'm just pleased that there's, there's so many questions. Yeah. Well, we've got another 21 to go here. I'll see if we can do it. So um, let's see. So uh, is there a supplement being added to on-ramp? That's our CDL school curriculum, or simply a change to the hours of service modules? Both. 
both. All right, great. Yeah, yeah we're, we're in the process of updating the on-ramp portion of the um, logging pieces of that. And obviously, as, as Tom was mentioned earlier, we do have updated our hours of service module. Awesome. Uh, has the FMCSA given guidance on weather-related adverse driving conditions since weather reports are readily and widely available? No, they haven't. And I think that's because basically we all kind of realize how inaccurate weather forecasts can be. Um, <laughs> I live, I live in, in a mountainous region and every day it says 10% chance of rain, regardless of what the weather looks out outside. So I think they kind of keep their options open and add that. So, but there hasn't been no guidance about um, weather reports. It says, and, and you know, their guidance says if, if it cannot be reasonably expected. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's definitely one of those things that uh, as the, uh, as you're talking to the trooper, um, it, a lot of that is going to fall on their determination, which, uh, as we all know, can be. Um, well, that, that's it, Tom. I mean, it's guidance. And I often wonder who the guidance is for. Is it for the driver, the carrier, or the enforcement people? I'm not really clear either way. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, eight hours in the sleeper berth, does that no longer pause the 14-hour clock? I believe not, no. Okay. It, it does say the longer period does not pause the clock. All right. Um, do we have to document or show proof of the adverse condition being used to extend the clock? Presumably that means after they've been issued some sort of, I mean, I don't know. Do, is it after they've been issued some sort of violation or is that just uh, as sort of a supplement to their log? It, it will be, you would have to document that you used it. Otherwise it will show up as a violation on an ELD or um, if, if there's an audit performed on the, the location, it would show up. So there needs to be some record showing why the driver exceeded possibly both the 11 hour and the 14 hour um, clocks. Outstanding. Uh, let's see, does the 30 minute break still need to be noted on the log as such or does it just, or does just being in on duty, not driving status suffice? That will suffice. It just means basically you've got to take a 30 minute break from driving. Okay. So as long as you're sometime in that first eight hours, you are not driving for 30 minutes, it'll suffice. Correct. Or it should suffice. Um, you indicated that the sleeper berth rule is optional for fleets. Is that the case? Correct. Yes. I mean, it doesn't, it, it's an exception. It doesn't mean to say you have to use it. Okay. Oh, here we go, Roy. Does this new sleeper berth rule, is it in compliant with the Canadian rule? Um, the Canadians haven't changed the rules in a while. Um, so it's, it's not in compliance with their regulations now. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, does ITI have the ability to comply with the various training requirements of individual states? Um, I'll answer that one, and the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, we do, and if, they, if you have a specific concern or a specific need, um, you can reach out to, uh, if you're not a client yet, reach out to one of our sales folks or uh, reach out to our client services team. Um, and you can reach uh, everybody. This goes for all of our clients. You can reach out to all of our uh, client services team uh, by sending an email to help, help at instructiontech.net. Uh, we'll reach our entire uh, uh, client services team and, and uh, Gina, Jen, or Robin will be thrilled to help you. Um, and I just want to point out we are over our 30 minute uh, thing here, but we do still have um, a, a bunch more questions. So we're just going to keep on uh, rocking through those. If you need to duck out, you are welcome to. You will get the video here at the end, um, or not at the end, but at the uh, uh, sometime in the next day or so, hopefully in the next few hours. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not sure what uh, they're necessarily referring to about um, do you get a new 14 hours, but 
then does this give you a new 14 hours? I'm not quite sure what that. Yeah, uh, the, the only way to get a new 14 hours is to take a 10 consecutive hours off duty. All right. Um, let's see, will the 30 minutes also count toward their 10 hour reset? The 30 minute break. Um, yes, as long as it's part of that 10 hours because they're not driving. So as long as they stop driving um, after eight hours, so that first 30 minutes could be off duty, but it would also then um, count towards their 10 hours off duty, which would then reset both their 11 and 14 hour clocks. Right. Uh, if a driver is split braking, do they need to close out their brake by going into the sleeper berth for the remaining hours, or can it be logged as off duty? The, the, the larger portion, so whether that's seven, seven and a half, eight, or whatever it chooses to be, must be in the sleeper berth. Okay. So that, that is called the sleeper berth exception for that reason. Okay. The smaller portion can be off duty or the sleeper berth. <coughs> uh, let's see. Um, whoops. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is the max sleeper or off duty to pause the clock? I believe it's three hours. Okay. Uh, is it eight hours of driving or eight hours of uh, on duty? I'm, 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 it's eight hours of driving is the that, answer. That, that's, that. that's the biggest change. It's, it's, it's now changed from just driving, not to being on duty, and also that it can be on any duty apart from driving. Right. Uh, to, 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 to do. Okay. And then we got a couple more here real quick in the chat. We've managed to blitz through 25 questions, which is uh, by far a new record for one of these webinars. Um, so just for clarification on the 30 minute, the 30 minute break can be any status, but they still can't be doing any work related functions, uh, such as fueling, dock loading, etc. Uh, under the old 30 minute rule, the 30 minute break applied to non work related functions. Can you clarify um, the new rule? Like, essentially, like, so, you know, if they're on duty, can they, can that break be doing work related functions? Uh, after September the 29th, yes, it can. Um, and that, that, again, is one of the big changes. It, it used to be you had to go off duty and not do anything. Now the driver can be fueling, can be offloading, can be talking to a customer, anything, as long as it's at least 30 minutes and it's not driving. So waiting time at a, at a, at a dock could be counted like a break if, as long as it's 30 consecutive minutes. Correct. All right. Wow. Well, everybody, that, uh, that, if there's any more questions, you can type them super duper fast. Um, Let's see, one other person said, can the 30 minute, we just answered this, can the 30 minutes be taken both on and off duty? For example, 15 minutes on duty and 15 minutes off duty, as long as they're not driving and it's 30 consecutive minutes, I think the answer there is yes. Yes. All right. Oh, wait, let's see. Since, so would the eight hour clock start for a required 30 minute break once the driver starts driving or once the driver goes on duty? It's once they've completed eight hours of driving. Okay. So, so some drivers may never need to use this. I mean, if they don't do eight hours of driving, you know, they may never need to take that 30 minute break. If, if they drive, you know, three or four hours in the morning, another couple of hours in the afternoon and, and get back to their terminal, they may have never accumulated eight hours driving during that day. All right. Uh, can you cover the new 14 hours non sleeper birth rules? Um, there, there aren't any at the moment. There is a proposed um, for the FMCSA. Some of the, some of you may have been aware that they are proposing to do a pilot to um, to pause the fourteen hour clock. But that and that would apply to all drivers. But unless you have a sleeper berth, um, you can't um, pause that fourteen hours. Great. All right. Well, I'm going to jump us and say. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. This was, uh, I think, a really good uh, webinar. Um, there is a four question survey at the end. So before you duck out, um, and when I end this, there's a four question survey. We really do value your input. 
Um, if you do need that uh, free course or that free video, or if you need it to be assigned in Sentex, go ahead and reach out to your client services team. They would be thrilled to assign that for you to your either your whole fleet or to whoever needs it. Um, and then you're gonna get that email uh, with the poster shortly if you haven't gotten it already. And then uh, we will be uh, sending out the link to YouTube uh, for this recorded webinar shortly, uh, once as soon as I can get it recorded. Uh, Roy, thank you so much. This was really fun. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank everybody for joining us. It was great fun. Awesome. As, or, or as much fun as the hours of service can be. <laughs> Let's do so many more of these regulatory updates. I'm sure everybody would be thrilled to continue to change all of their rules and regulations for all their drivers. There's nothing more fun, I'm sure, for everybody. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down, and we will uh, see you guys at the next one. Bye now. Thanks. Bye-bye.